Traders, welcome back to another Relentless Recap. Guys, green day today. We're ending up 350 bucks. Wasn't a bad day, but we definitely could have done a little bit better. Uh, I don't think we were as efficient as we could have been, especially since we spotted this red to green fairly early. So IMMX was the one today that took off, right? Initially, and you can see really and truly two different kinds of red to green. Uh, this one a little bit more prolonged, right, a couple, over a couple of candles. And the very first one that we had was literally just one candle. So first one minute candle to make the new high, you know, down and then up. So break of 206 resulted into a push to 216. Unfortunately, right here, it, when it came down to 97 and VWAP, VWAP at the time was around um, plus or minus, you know, $2 somewhere there. It didn't bounce and it went down lower. So, you know... I looked away from it here, um, but it, it, it did hold its levels, right? So despite this lighter volume here, and this is something I usually, you know, kind of fall victim to, is that when stocks start to pull back, I start to look away, right? When they go red on the day, it doesn't mean that it's done, right? And so usually there's more than one watch list stock, so I start to rotate through the, the list of stocks to see what else might have been moving, what else is moving, and then so I look away. But if you're really focused on just one stock and you're still watching this thing as it pulls back, look at this. A low of 92, and then a low of 90, and then again a low of 90. Yes, the volume is a little lower, but it's holding its ground. And from there, it starts to curl. And so if you're watching here, and, and you, even if you take a starter position, you know you could have gotten in a very, very early entry at the beginning of the move. And then it starts to surge. we got to push here to 98, and then 06. I was not scalping it early. Uh, as the move went on, I felt like scalping it was getting harder and harder to do because, you know, we would push up, what are, you know, let's say, let's call some prices, 210, 215, 220. Once it hits these these targets, the bids are kind of coming down three, four, five, six cents. So I'm like, ah, you know, I don't know if I want to try and scalp the highs, get in and out quickly. So I'm like, okay, try, tried my best not to do it and just waited for some pullback trades. I did get this pullback trade right here. We, we had a low of 09. I did buy this entry here as we kept going. Uh, I sold around 15, I believe. Let's see, time 37. Let's double check. I, you know, I could be completely wrong here going off memory. I want to believe, and by the way, time 37, 09. Okay, 37, 09, 37, 03. Okay, nine. Well, okay, it looks like I missed the trade. See? Okay, it looks like I missed the trade. This is why it's always good to come and double check. Now, looking back at the charting, I knew that that's a place I should have been attempting to buy, right? So I was only in for three seconds. Paper hands, relentless trader, in for three seconds and completely botched the trade. And then this is where I attempted a scalp. So I, attempt, I attempted a scalp at 19. Um, Let's see. Actually, let's look at the timing. That might have been a dip attempt. 39. You know, I took a lot of dip attempts today. Um, no, I, I I can't. I know what I do know is that what I do remember is that at one point in time, I took one scalp that I shouldn't have took. But anyhow, majority of the trades were me trying to get the bottom. And, you know, you guys know how I trade. I don't want to see the stock going lower. I want to be in at the bottom. And it's it's a good and bad thing. The good thing is that I'll be cutting the trade almost immediately. So if this if the stock does flush down a bit, I'm not going to even be any sort of red. The bad news is that once you, you stop out so quickly, you know, let's say they're selling on the tape or if we just go down one cent lower and it doesn't really give out before bouncing, you, you stand a chance at missing the trade. And that's never a good thing, right? You know, and it happened today happened today where we come down a little bit it it makes me think it's gonna go lower it doesn't and then it rips at nine and then i believe it at, at uh, 19 or 18 here is where i was able to catch it for a couple of cents so in at 19 and out at uh and this is not even a great trade really it's only a five six cent win in at 19 out at 25 25 26 26 and the last 500 shares out at 20 as it came back down and you know attempting 19 again paper hands in at 19 in, in at 21 out of 20 in at 19 out of 18 in at 19 out of 19 and uh, 
the stock ended up holding at 44 here uh, very, very well, right? This is 44, so you, you kind of see how this can, these candles played out. There are days where I try a different approach where, where I'll buy and then just put a stop in place. I'll tell myself, hey, I'll give this thing five to eight cents of room, you know, depending on the personality of the stock and what makes sense. And every time I'm doing that, I'm stopping out for a 15 cent loss or something. It's like the stock just flushes down, you know. So I, I've just decided, hey, I'm going to live by this. And that's what it's going to have to be. If I miss trades, I miss trades. So I'm going to continue to do exactly this. But, you know, when this when the timing is right and I do get the entries that I, I want, I'm going to size in aggressively. So 19, I wasn't buying two, three times or using, you know, let's say uh, 3,500 share blocks right here. So, you know, when the timing is right, we'll be able to size into them. But you can see this thing really went sideways. It, it breaks down to 16 here. And it does this bit of a false, uh, you know, what we want to call this a bear trap, right? This was a bear trap. Bottoming wick, low of 16. And why is this a bear trap, you might say? Well, because this candle here was a top and tail candle. What's this, 47? So that would lead us to 45 on the five minute. So we had a, well, you know, on the five minute, we were showing more so indecision. But on the one minute, we definitely had, hey, topping tail, shooting star kind of a candle. And it looks like we're about to break down. We make the new low. And there is a 50,000 share bid. Uh, you know, I can show you guys level two of this trade. There's a, there's a 50,000 share buyer that comes here. I, and this is where I could really punch the buy button a couple times, especially right here as it came down. And it was quick. It, it comes down very fast at 950. And you have to really, if you, if you took your hand off the buy button for one second, you missed the trade already. So I was kind of scratch. I was, you know, I was kind of, you know, just not really trading my best and until I got this trade. It really put me on the on the board. So at 9:50, I'm in here at 17, and I'm out at 27 for a full 10 cents, which is just about 250. Attempted a high of day scalp. So remind, remind to jeez, <laughs> to remind you guys. Uh, I hate when I do that. I hate when I do that. To remind you guys, right? I said I didn't want to really be trading scalps, high of day scalps, high of day entries. Right here, I attempted it. I'm like, ah, oh, RT, don't do it. So I'm in and I'm out scratch. 951, right? This is right on this candle here. Let's put a trend line coming across because this is essentially going to be a high of day entry, right? So it gives a move, and then we get a bit of a baby pullback in here, right? We get the high of, of 32, a quick low here of 28, and it surges up. Usually, usually when I'm scalping, I buy the first two times. The third time is where you don't buy. If a trade is coming up to high of day and I think it's about to rip, I'll take it the first attempt. I'll take the second attempt. If it doesn't go on the second, the third attempt, I'll avoid. Right here, I took one attempt at the highs. Why did I try to try it at the highest? Because you know, intuition is like, hey, it, it, it did a bear trap. More than likely, it's gonna give a new high of day. And you know, all of that is, is why I should have even took more size down here. You know, or I should have been in seventy five hundred, sold like four thousand at twenty seven, twenty eight, holding the rest break even, because it is likely that we make a new high, right? Instead of even trying to get back in. But anyhow, I sold. I'm trying to get back in. And, uh, you know, we, we didn't take the second attempt for the scalp. If we did, I would have been in at 32 or 31, or maybe even 30, and it, it took off. It took off. We saw 35, 38, 40, 45, 48. It was a beautiful move. It got up here to 52. I thought we were going to see the one-minute pullback. It did not happen. Low of 41, low of 37. I bought pullbacks in here, and... Uh, didn't quite get to see the follow through in it for in a 38 a couple of times and not quite seeing the follow through right so I'm, I'm in here 38.99 in a 38 again you can see we had a high of 44 but we don't quite get to see the follow through you know 
So yeah, I even took 35. And this is where I kind of overdid it. Now, 250, we had uh, we had yesterday's high, as well as some potential daily resistance from way back when, I want to believe. This was a pre-market, no, 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 it was an intraday level. This 250 area was an intraday level from between May and like June of this year, where it had some trouble, and it was also the pre-market highs today. So it's why this line you guys is, you guys are seeing it's like stretching back all the way. But yeah, so you know, I thought it was it was gonna be able to break, so I bought this pullback here and kind of overdid it after 58 because I felt like the volume profile was looking good and that we had the chance to curl. But unfortunately, that was not the case. So I, you know, all these trades right here kind of gave back like a hundred bucks between like 59. See 59. So in at 35, out at 42 and 46. 45, 46, 38. And then I think everything else was losing trades. Well, a one cent gain on this one. Two cent loss. And then in at 34, out of 38. In at 29, out of 27. And then we had a one last trade here when it surged back up later in the day. I bought this pretty extended actually. I thought it was gonna get halted. I thought this was gonna get halted up. It, it was coming up on this lighter volume and started to go. I'm like, you know what? If it only goes over 37, I'm gonna take the long. So I got in at 39.40. Let me show you guys how the how this candle was looking before we had this doji, right? So earlier I mentioned this bit of a baby pullback kind of a thing. This is exactly how that that area over there was looking a nice green candle coming up small pullback and then rip right exactly this is exactly what this was looking like until it got up there to 46 and then sold off so it was looking good to go but you know not quite so topping tail here topping tail here and to the depths it goes to the depths if you got shares to short you know i mean man even for me, like I mentioned, yeah, I kind of overdid it here. But even from the, the last set of trades I took at 28, we still went as low as 209, 210. You know, there's still something in there. Uh, still a couple of cents, 17 cents. Not, not much, right, if you're not short higher up at 40. But especially over here, if you have shares and they're cheap. Uh, maybe I wouldn't, for me personally, I wouldn't go short here on the first attempt in case it, it would have been strong. But right here on this topping wick, as soon as this rejects uh, 45 and, and really and truly the flat top that's here for a uh, break of 40, once it rejects this trend line, that's my entry and it goes to the depths. You got to be patient with these trades though. You know, it comes back up to 37. Then it rejects one last time, and then boom, Titanic, 199. And, you know, some people probably still holding, and then tomorrow will come, tomorrow. It's like, what are the odds this curls back up to 250 tomorrow? It's possible, but the probability will say that it's 90% going to go down even lower, because that's what happens 90% of the times. Uh, let, let's, do, let's just do a quick summary. AMAM. -AM. Where did that go? AMAM, jeez. AMAM, look at this move, right? Look at this move. This one actually had went higher into the close, but then look at this, sold off, sold off. And then, you know, it's kind of sideways right now. What else did we have uh, a couple days ago? Like we, we can do this, you know, for a bunch of stocks and you, you know, you guys will see. Um, HTGM, I think, was another stock, right? The, most of these companies, once, these, once this headline come out, that's it. You know, we go up, look at this one, a big move into the open. We got halted up. It went from, you know, 170 to a high of 197 and then to the, to the depths, you know, 67 cents. So, you know, for me, I don't like swinging these stocks. There, you know, there, there are a few, R-E-N-T, where, you know, 
will get the move to the upside. All right, look at RENT every day. This one has been going, you know, going up the last couple of days. But for every one of these stocks like this, there's nine that are just after the first day Titanic. Yeah, guys, 15 minute recap here. We'll, that'll do it. Uh, I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm coming correct. Tomorrow, I'll be a little bit more aggressive depending on what we have. Uh, I'm ready to go. Finally, feeling a little bit better here. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to be looking to bring the energy. You know, two green days so far, right? The goal is to have two more green days to end the week, and then we're going to head into next week strong and head into the holiday weekend really well, uh, really good. You know, I got to I gotta get some Christmas gifts here, so, you know, I can't be slacking off on these green days. Uh, the pressure is on, and I, I embrace the pressure. Life is pressure, so, you know, right here we're making diamonds. So hit that thumbs up, stay tuned. It's been Relentless Trader. Check out those links down below. And I'll catch you guys first thing tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. I'll be there at 9 a.m. sharp tomorrow, and we will be dialed. Stay safe, stay green. I am signing out.